you don't have to do that. It's just the interview. But you got, I know Ken mm. had to remind you a few minutes ago. But you don't I'm, even, you don't even like the hire, though. I'm, I'm clear from concussion protocol, ready to go. But you don't even like the hire, though. I like the other one. Okay. I like mm -hmm. one of the two. All right. Well, joining us right now is uh, a guy who we all are very fond of. He joined us uh, last week uh, with some firings and some things went down. Um, you hear him on 105.3 The Fan. Certain people in the room don't know about that. Um, <laughs> Kevin Gray. Uh, Kevin, do we have you? Good. What's going on, man? So uh, there he is. There he Woo! is. Listen, listen uh, I don't know. You probably can't see it, but I'm doing a little front running right now with my uh, Pacers polo <laughs> on. Um, in support. Like, forgive me for my voice, by the way. I'm a little little hoarse. I've nope. been feeling well the last couple of days, so forgive me for my voice. Don't worry about it. You're you good. hate the kid move that much, huh? Yeah, you've been yelling, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, according to Newy Scruggs' uh, Twitter account, um, it's official, and Jason Kidd looks like he's going to be the hired as the new head coach of the uh, Dallas Mavericks. And a guy who is uh, down at the AAC like you are, I wanted to get your thoughts and opinion on something like that. Uh, yeah, Woj just made the news official uh, during the halftime of the Suns-Clippers uh, game, so it sounds like that's a, a full go now. But um, look, man, um, I don't know. I really don't know because – I tweeted it out earlier, you know, the move for Jason Kidd as the Mavericks new head coach is, um, to me, tone deaf at best uh, and at worst. Um, you know, a guy, Mark Cuban, who clearly, you know, culture or lessons be damned. <laughs> he has not, uh, he's decided to go full heel turn here, to use a wrestling term, uh, to go full heel turn. So we'll see how it goes, though. Um, Nico Harrison being brought in as, you know, executive here to work alongside Michael Finley. I like that move. Uh, the NBA is all about developing and fostering relationships, and Nico Harrison has done a terrific job of that throughout his time as Nike. It is funny, though. <clears throat> Harrison was the guy. So you remember the Stephen Curry botched Nike meeting? Mm -hmm. You remember that? You remember that story? Yeah. Nico Harrison was the guy that they sent in to do the pitch <laughs> <laughs> for Stephen Curry at that time to do the uh, to try and get him to join Nike. And of course, you know, he left and went to Under Armour or whatever. So there's that little tidbit. But look, man, uh, we'll see if Mark Cuban uh, gets what he what he wanted. But Jason Kidd was at 183 and 190 as a head coach in five seasons. Hasn't really shown a propensity to be a great coach. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Kevin, are you um, – so this seems to be a kind of a division here. Is it because, and we all know it, there is the history with the Mavericks workplace and all that. Is it because of his right. past? Are we more upset about that? Or is it because of judging him solely on him being a, as a head coach, is he not up for the job? Uh, I think it's both. I think a lot of the reaction that you've seen today, you know, on social media and across NBA circles is, you know, Jason Kidd has a relationship with a lot of players in this league, you know, as a player's coach. Uh, Giannis at the time was disappointed when he was fired. You can take that for what it's worth when he was fired in Milwaukee. Um, Ramona Shelburne has talked about the idea that the Lakers absolutely love Jason Kidd as an assistant coach there. In fact, you know, at one point they wanted to make him the head coach of the Lakers before ultimately going with Frank Vogel, and Frank Vogel had to swallow Jason Kidd being on his on his staff. Now, obviously, it's worked out, obviously. Um, but I think the writing we saw kind of on the wall as I kind of, you know, play Monday morning quarterback in 2020 vision, you know, hindsight is 2020, you know, we kind of should have saw this coming when Dirk Nowitzki was brought on as the uh, quote unquote special advisor between, you know, him, Michael Finley. And I, told you that was a load, I told you that was a load of crap, uh, KG, when it happened. I told you it was. Well, well, I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. Is what... That was the hiring firm. I'm sorry. The hiring firm I thought was, uh, was, was a load of crap. Sorry. Well, you know, <laughs> And this is why I, I'm more, I don't even know if I use the word concern. I'm more frightened, honestly, nope. because Rick Carlisle telegraphed this move on his way out the door with his parting shot today when he decided to, you know, take the job in, uh, in Indianapolis, you know, with the Indiana Pacers. But the fact that Cuban looked at his situation and said, okay, because he's, he's got to be looking at this purely from a basketball perspective. Jason Kidd, a lot of foster relationships around the league. Nico Harrison, a lot of great relationships developing around the league, that kind of thing. 
But you can't tell me Mark Cuban's learned anything over the last three years after he was out on national television crying to Rachel Nichols trying to apologize <laughs> for the you know the stuff going on in terms of his workplace. You can't tell me he's learned anything you know, because you don't you don't you don't hire Jason Kidd just from an optics perspective. You don't hire Jason Kidd if you feel like that's something that you learn. You just don't do it. Hey, you know what's funny is what I was thinking about now that you said that. What if Rick Carlisle knew that Jason Kidd was going to do it and they tried to keep it on the raft so he went out and said that just to stir it up on purpose? <laughs> I mean that'd be you know that'd be an asshole move. But, I mean why? I mean the way he got done, but, the way he got done was assholeish. So why not? Well, I thought it was a great business decision on Carlisle's part to leave early. Yeah. I don't think he got fired. I think he looked at the situation and said, "Look, whomever they bring in as general manager here, they're not beholden to me. I could get fired tomorrow as soon as this GM is brought in." So he looked at the situation. I'm gonna go ahead and bounce now, and there's plenty of jobs available for me. And I'm gonna go take a shot and go in to get one of those jobs, and that's exactly what he did. So I didn't mind the move by Carlisle at the time. Um, I just think for Cuban, this is a real, real test of. I saw plenty of folks today. Now you know these these could be veiled threats or whatever, but some folks take this stuff really to heart. I saw plenty of folks today on Twitter talking about I'm canceling my math season tickets. I'm canceling <laughs> this. I'm can look again. You could take it with a grain of salt. You could take you just for what it is. You know, some folks really about that. So if you, you about that, you about that. So no problem. But if they this is and, the kind of stuff, and listen, and, stuff and, Cuba's got to deal with. If, if that's the case, then uh, I want to know if all those people, Chris Brown fans or Mike Tyson fans that saying that, because if so, again, I don't want to hear I, it again. Yeah. The double standard, the, the hypocritical <laughs> yeah. nature of it. Like I get it. Trust right. me. I get it. But this is the kind of stuff that Cuban is going to have to deal with in terms of the backlash of this hire. And Cuban said, well, I don't give a damn. So here's Jason Kidd, your new head coach. We have a 105.3 The Fans owned Kevin Gray joining us right here on Best for Business. Um, I, look at, I look at the Jason Kidd hire as a Jerry Jones type move. And we the talk parcel, about it. The we Parcells, uh, the Parcells signing. Yeah, we, we talk about it. We talked about it as jerry you're going and getting parcels to basically save face or save grace or whatever and so now yeah. so now basically uh here's mark um as you say it's a heel turn but here's here's mark basically going screw y'all i'm gonna go ahead and do it um and then i also hear you know like nationally people are calling mark a hypocrite um and comparing this dude to like jerry jones and jerry did with greg hardy even even donald trump yeah, and so I'm looking at I'm I'm looking now at a Mark Cuban who we saw pretty much in the past before you know before Dirk got help or whatever. So it's not even really a question, but I kind of want to just I mean, could you could you elaborate on how you feel about you know basically Mark going scorched earth and saying you know, walk around the club, fuck everybody. I mean, yeah, this is a giant middle finger to all of those who feel like Cuban has lost his marbles. And again, he kind of saved himself a little bit with this Nico Harrison hire because, you know, reading and understanding who this guy is, like that's a that's a unique move. We've seen teams like the New York Knicks, you know, bringing in guys like, you know, Leon Rose and, you know, consulting with guys like World Wide West. Like the, the teams are starting to do this. The Lakers, Rob Palenka, you know, former, you know, agent. My teams are doing this. So it, that move makes a lot of sense given today's landscape and culture of relationship building and players and those kinds of things in the NBA. So that's fine. Um, but with Mark Cuban and, and Jason Kidd, it's kind of weird because it's kind of – I never thought this organization – look, I already said that they milked the 2011 championship like way too much. That's why That's why I'm trying to figure now, out – that's why I'm trying to figure out uh, everybody's so mad about Jason Kidd. Just a few weeks ago, I ain't heard nothing about our no domestic violence when we were up praising – Winning the championship a couple of weeks well, ago. Well, no one was seriously considering him to be a head coach again, especially with this franchise, given the history that they've been dealing with over the last, you know, several years. Like, it just, that to me is just completely tone deaf. And Mark Cuban that, is Now, that part, is, that, that part is, that part is, that isn't a good look. But the idea that Mark Cuban has turned himself into another Jerry Jones, you know, Jerry Jones has the title of general manager. You know, Mark Cuban at times during his ownership, you know, with this team has fashioned himself as basically the general manager here. He will always have final say when it comes to basketball decisions. It's just about who he's listening to at the time. And he got tired of listening to Donnie Nelson and he wants some new voices in there, I guess. 
but my, my ultimate point is why are you turning back the clock literally to 2011 <laughs> Dirk Nowitzki, Michael Finley, Jason Kidd like what do you who's next Tyson Chandler who's next Jason Terry who's yeah, I, next I was thinking AJ Jason Terry, I was thinking Jason well yeah you heard that too about he wants to come back and be some type of assistant coach I thought Jason was, Jason Kidd I mean Jason Terry might be one too and I was joking earlier on Twitter I was like I could see it now Michael Finley, president of the basketball operations. Jason Kidd is the head coach. Terry Stotts as the lead assistant. Jason Terry, J.J. Barea, and you and I could be the general manager. Like, that's what it felt like it was going. But then to see it pretty much come to fruition, that's frightening. Like, you <laughs> and I and the three of us, you know, the four of us have been watching this thing play out over the last two weeks. And it plays like a Tyler Perry movie. Like, you know what's coming next. And the fact that it actually played out the way that it played out is frightening to me. So... Cuba's got a lot to prove. Look, free agency's coming up. The NBA draft is coming up. That doesn't matter because they don't have a draft pick anyway. <laughs> but free agency's coming up. Don't even get me started. Don't even go there. <laughs> well, you know, just make sure you wish J.J. Redick a happy birthday yesterday because you know, it was his birthday yesterday. <laughs> he doesn't like uh, me. Well, I, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is a referendum on Mark Cuban and his ability to lead. I don't think he's changed from a cultural perspective and an organizational perspective, clearly, by hiring Jason Kidd. But for the basketball reasons, aside from the fact that Jason Kidd isn't great X's and O's wise, this is about trying to appease Luca and get guys in here who can play with him. And now, I was just telling EA, you know, let's be honest here. When's the last time Dallas liked anybody that, that's been bought in here? Hell, they didn't like Mike McCarthy. Even when Rick Carlisle got here the first time, they didn't like Rick Carlisle. They didn't like Avery Johnson when he came here. Now we don't like, uh, now we don't like, uh, Jason Kidd. I, uh, I I disagree though, real quick. Oh, we didn't I, like we didn't like Jason Garrett when he took over for uh for Wade. Whoa, Phillips. time out! Everybody loved Jason Garrett. They had Jason Garrett's head on Tom Landry's body. Well, no, people like Jason Garrett when he came here. Plus the way, plus the way that went down between. Yeah, that's the window. The whole the whole way it went down. Everybody had they. Yeah, everybody had they they, they feelings about people it. People love Parcells when he came. Uh, they didn't I, like him on the way out, but they loved him when he came. I can't remember too much about when Parcells came. I do Parcells. Yeah. But they were about to put parades. Okay, I, I, I don't remember too much about Parcells. They didn't like Wash when he got here. Um, okay, that's another one. But I'm just saying, the city of Dallas that we don't never, we hardly ever like the person who's brought in here. Wall has a point. That eventually, we all this is what happens, especially us in the media and fans. We don't like it at first. We all have our opinion, and then it, if they if it's successful, we all act do revisionist history and act like, oh, we were always on de board with this move, and uh, yeah, that happens. But I do think this kid move is nothing. This is gonna. This is. Mass fans are too smart, or at least smarter than Cowboys fans, to uh, to accept this. They're already at the gates right now, protesting. Man, listen. When they start winning games, all that ain't I gonna hope. matter. I well, I mean, for some folks, that'll that'll be that for them. You know, if if Jason Kidd gets in here and wins games, you know, for some people that they'll be okay with it. But there are a lot of folks who say damn him winning games just the optics of this coach with his history being a part of this franchise and the way that mark cuban went about it because in a lot of ways you can look at mark cuban as a liar because what did mark cuban say he was gonna do first mark cuban said he was gonna hire a general manager first he was gonna get his front office in place and get those people going within what two three days one of the first reports from tim mcmahon was Michael Finley and Dirk Nowitzki and trusted advisors around Cuban <laughs> have had conversations around Jason Kidd being their head coach. Mm -hmm. What? You haven't even hired the person who you think is going to even approve an idea of Jason Kidd being your head coach. So to me, Mark Cuban has really drug his, himself through the mud here. And we should have known he tried to get the cheap pop by bringing in Dirk Nowitzki as a special advisor. Like, that's when we should have known what time it was. And, I did. And you know what? You know what? And to piggyback off of, off of that, um, if you think about it, He's pretty much gone NFL with this whole thing, you know, because, you know, uh, in, in the NFL, uh, Shereen Williams, all these people, uh, you know how they line when their lips are moving. Yeah. So that was a whole NFL thing. Right. So basically, Mark is doing the same thing. Just like I said earlier, Donald Trump was doing the same thing. It's happening, but you turn a blind eye to it and say it's total bullshit. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, oh, real quick, Kevin, what's your um, what's your Twitter, Twitter, Twitter handle? Kevin Gray Sports. Okay, so I want you to do the special project for me and the show. All right, I want I implore you to hop on your Twitter Twitter handle, 
mm-hmm. and do a poll. And just ask. We can do that now. Ask Maverick. No, no, I want him to do it. Uh-huh. He has more followers than we do, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's only on YouTube. I want but you. But they like you more, Tobias, than they yeah, do me. They so, really do. <laughs> you, know, you got the account that folks want to follow and talk about and talk to about. So maybe Look, you should do it. It is yeah, not good in LA right now. Because I, I follow a lot of porn. So, For who? Um, no. <laughs> so w- what I implore you to do is, and you can copy the show on us, you can copy us three on there. Um, just ask the MFF elders, are they satisfied? Or are they happy with the uh, with the new Jason Kidd news? Oh, I can no, uh, you don't even right now. Hey, you don't even have to put a poll uh, out. I can pull on my timeline right now. Hell no, they not hell happy. No, no not one not. MFF elder is happy right now. I want, let me not say not one because there are several out there that are you know pretty excited by this. A lot of them are not feeling this. And again, it's not even from the stuff off the court. It's the stuff on the court. Mm-hmm. Like he has not proven. In his five seasons as a head coach in the NBA, that he's good at this. They did the same so, thing with Avery, though. When Avery got hired, like, why are we hiring Avery? He ain't done nothing. We needed somebody you got, else. You got literal receipts on this dude. Yeah. This is the same dude that told one of his players in a game with the Nets, "Hey, hit me told and you. knock this water cup over <laughs> so you can get a call a timeout." This is also the same coach that told Chris Sh- Middleton strategy. to miss a <laughs> free throw <laughs> on purpose <laughs> because he was afraid of a four point play. What the hell are you talking about here? Like this is this well, is who has been brought in as the on, head coach wait a minute, Kevin, of this just, team. Now give him some credit. Now he took a step back and went and learned two years under LeBron and oh. Vogel <laughs> to get himself together. So just you just get him. You know what's ironic about that? He wouldn't have learned a damn thing because Frank or uh, Rob Palenka and Jeannie Buss wanted to make him the head coach. They had to convince him. Actually, no, 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 no. Yeah, they say, they say, Vogel. they say, they say, just go into Frank and learn a little bit. And what did they do? They won a championship. He, he's learned. He learned some things being under LeBron. Kevin, you know? sorry, Walt is uh, okay. uh, uh, making this hire okay because apparently Kid was okay with LeBron. So what LeBron does is okay with that's LeBron. Not why, okay with LeBron. Yeah, yeah. That's Who not why. Okay with LeBron? But that's not like, why. We're talking about? But that's not why. Why I said that. Number one, when the question was posed to me, when I kept saying it was time for Rick Carlisle to go, everybody kept asking me, "Who? Well, who's your next hire? Who's your next head coach?" The first person I said was Jason Kidd. Okay, let's touch on that for a quick second. Mm-hmm. So Brad Towns of the Dallas Morning News said, you know, one team source told him that they are hot about the fact that Jamal Mosley did not get more consideration yeah. as head coach for this team. That's another frightening aspect about this because all this time, what's been the mantra about Jamal Mosley being the head coach for this team? Player coach. He's got a great, he's, he's a player coach. He's got a terrific relationship with Luka Doncic. To me, it would have been the right thing to do to say, go ahead and let's install him as the head coach and let's continue to build around him. Mark Hume was like, actually, no, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think about Jamal Mosley as head coach, essentially. That, to me, is kind of well. Uh, uh, let me say this. Go ahead, go ahead. I will counter that because no, I'm not – unless Mark Cuban is completely asinine and completely Jerry Jones like now, I guarantee you they did walk through Luka all through this. And it, it, Luka must have had to prove this. And we know – Okay, Luka, wait, 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 wait. When? My man's over here hitting trick shots in Slovenia right now. Okay, you don't. I, I, I already, right I already know, but I already mm-hmm. characterized it. This is how it went down. Mark calls Luke on the phone. phone. Hey, well, hey, we're gonna get uh, Jason Kidd. Okay, cool. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> I, I need to go back to a cool. To, right. <laughs> right. But that's how, how much Luke, consultant did they really do of Luca? But that's all they <laughs> need. Luca's Luka. not gonna give you much. They, they. I guarantee hey, hey, you, there's what? no way that there, there's no way that they did not. For, at least have Luka Doncic in some kind of conversation. And the fact of the matter is, the fact that Jason <laughs> Kidd was telegraphed by Rick Carl today, and then we were already in advanced negotiations with Jason Kidd right after that report, See, that tells that? me that they were already... This they were already, already talking. Yeah, they, this was already part. This was already part. I think, that's why I say, I think Carlisle leaked that on purpose on his way out the door. Which is why I go back to the fact that Mark Cuban is a liar. Well, of course. Because well, of course he's a lie. He's a salesman. All salesmen. You show me an honest, <laughs> you show me an honest salesman, I'll show you a broke salesman. Yeah. You can't be that guy with the optics of your organization over the past three years. All of your stuff has got to be above board because everybody's going to come after you and kill you about whatever moves you decide to make. And then you make the move of all moves by hiring Jason Kidd, knowing what kind of history he's got in the league and off the court. To me, that doesn't jive right if you're Mark Cuban trying to give off an era or an aura, excuse me, 
of being a guy whose organization is culture change. You brought in yeah. Cynthia Marshall here to clean up your organization. What does this move say to all the things that Cynthia Marshall's done as CEO of this basketball team? I bet she was slapping the how face. How many times? How many times has Jerry Jones told us <laughs> something and he went the other way? And, and AT and T Stadium is still packed in field. Well, you're talking about a completely different. I'm just know, saying the Cowboys. The, the Mavericks. The Mavericks are still going to sell the AAC out. They're still going to sell the AAC out. All the ticket holders are still going to be there. You know why? Because they're coming to see Luca at the end of the day. You know what they're going to say to you? Well, I'm not coming for Jason Kidd. I'm coming to see Luca. Really, they don't understand. They still crossing the bottom line that they that they think they're not crossing. You still come put money in Mark Cuban's pocket. So let me ask you, what happens when you get two, three years into this thing? Jason Kidd's got a 500 record in three years as a head coach. Oh, well, you got to fire. First round. We got to fire. So what are we doing here then? I'm talking about if you get but down you, on the road and that happens. But you, run, well, the, but, but Kevin, you run that chance uh, with Kevin with Mosley too, though. Yeah, you did. This here's the problem I have with this. Everybody getting mad at Mosley. We're mad because we wanted it. Just because, no, you're mad because Lucas said he wanted. No, right, right. He didn't get what he wanted. Exactly. That's why we're mad about the Mosley thing. And you know, I guarantee you, Brad Tanzasaur is probably Jamal Mosley himself. <laughs> uh, he's mad that he didn't get the opportunity. <laughs> we're only mad because we didn't get what we, as the media and fans alike, wanted. But again, we don't know if Mosley would have worked out either. Again, well, it's all this speculation. Well, also about the Mavericks too, because the Mavericks said that there was plenty of support in the building for Mosley. But there was a lot of folks who That's felt great. that right. Mosley, this was Mosley's time to become the head coach. And now to find out that he wasn't even really considered, to me, this is Cuban going full Cuban, saying, you know what, damn, for, everybody else has to well, say. Well, for sure. Is, but know, he's the owner. Yes, he's the owner. Which I mean, yeah, he he can do what he wants. Exactly, and that's the problem. We have to. This is the same thing with Jerry and the Cowboys, and we keep bringing that comparison. But what has Jerry Jones done for the last thirty years since they won the Super Bowl? Do what the hell he wants to do. Exactly, and it hasn't changed. Where's that got him? But it uh, well, doesn't matter. He's the number one brand in sports. But that you know what's you know what's funny, Kevin. That's uh, uh, money's coming in, and that's what matters. The seats are still still, filled. We're still talking about it. We're still fans of it. In the end, look at that. Look at that Dallas Cowboys merchandise. Are. Look at that. Look at double, that. Double I'm sorry. Look at all are. that Dallas Cowboy paraphernalia. The thing is, I think regardless, and again, I get it. The optics are bad. I said, but well, as soon as it happened, I was like, that ain't right. Because that's one reason why he didn't get the Portland job. Because people started bringing up things about his domestic violence issues. And we live in a different world than we did back when Jason Kidd first got a head coaching job. The Me Too movement is big. Everything. We're in a whole different world. I get that. But in the end, if you start winning, it changes everything. And that's the that's the sad reality of sports. That's you know what though, that to me um, that's not going to happen if like like Kevin just said, uh, two and three years on the line. If you know if these if these Mavericks are you know a, a forty win team and bouncing, yeah, or a five hundred a five hundred team and not get in the playoffs, um, you got a top five player on your team right now in the game, right? And so if you're five hundred. For the next two to three years, well, hold on. Now. He's gonna want the hell out of here. Well, hold on. Now, so you're man. gonna lose your head coach, mm -hmm. and you're gonna lose your top five player, and more than likely, Mark's gonna sell. It's not gonna be just like, uh, oh, I'm just gonna hang around like Jerry, like Jerry Jones. No, 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 no. That's not no, what's gonna happen. Even, I think it's, it's, the Mavericks are not. Lose this the, team. the Mavericks are not a family wide, a family run organization. What's really going to happen is everybody's gonna be going at once. The AAC ain't gonna be packed no more. Not for Maverick games. Well. I mean, let's be honest here. Like I told you, when a new coach come in, his first year is talent evaluation. So you can already scrap this first year as a wipe. What? Whoa! Well, that's whoa, that's the up. thing. It, all of this ultimately boils down to though. is, yeah, yeah, I mean, can this can this front office build around Luka Doncic and get the kind of players? Because here's what's wild about this. Not that Tim Cato made a terrific point on this. This feels like an organization that's reverting back to what it was trying to do 10 years ago mm -hmm. when your man Donnie Nelson was trying to get, draft Giannis and your man Mark Cuban was like, actually, nah, I want to sign Dwight Howard instead. Yeah. And and he didn't come here. This organization is going to try and go star chasing. They've put a guy in position in Nico Harrison who's got all these relationships across the league. Finley, Jason Kidd, players coach, players love him. Dirt. They're going to try and go get stars around Luka Doncic. Now, how successful they are it's really going to depend on if this front office can sell these guys on coming here going forward. That, so, to me, is so the biggest it, thing. The here. Brooklyn, like he like Tova said, they want to be the Brooklyn Nets of, uh, of the Western Conference. Like when Brooklyn first got together, they went and got Kevin Garnett, uh, Paul well, Pierce, and, and all that. Darren you Williams. Gotta get, you got you to gotta win. You got to get stars. You've seen what's going on in the NBA. You got to have at least two of them. At he least. Drafted, too. So, drafted stars. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other part I have a question too. Like, who can be the one drafting around here? Because the Mavericks have 
proven that they can't do that. Like, well, we they don't. It's okay. Don't we won't. We won't be drafting for five years anyway. So we're good. Well, don't worry. They got. They still. <laughs> <That's laughs> <that's laughs> ah, we ain't got no picks. Don't worry about it, Kevin. <laughs> don't worry about it, Kevin. I'll get over there and do some talking. I'll, I'll be getting. I'll be putting some mock drafts out. I'll get. Don't worry. About, I got go. it. Oh, that, I got it. Go. That Pacer shirt on. Not with that Pacer shirt on. Don't worry about because remember because you. I don't know. Like I told you, I'm the one that told Donnie to move up and draft Lucas. So I got it. Don't worry about. it. I got it. Just let me do my thing. Yeah, just let me do my thing. Gavin, more importantly, okay. and uh, as we wrap this up, I got to say this. What's that? Are you ready for my boys in the hood? <laughs> oh, that's right. The last time I did talk to you was uh, going to be watching that and reviewing it's that. It's for the culture, apparently. It's for right? the culture. It's for, for the, the culture. culture. The film culture. Uh, Is that the name of your segment? I guess, Well, Walt named it. Movie? Walt named it that, so I guess I have to I guess so. <laughs> hey, man, thank you for joining us, man. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to talk to you next week. I uh, appreciate it, man. Y'all have a good rest of your night. So, boss, you stay up, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> what you're doing out here in the streets. Right. <laughs> appreciate it. I will. He literally, he literally was in the right. streets Tuesday night. <laughs> he <laughs> was. Later, Kevin. All right, All right. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Are you ready? I, I don't know if they're ready, if people are ready for this. Well, yeah, I hope they are ready. But uh, right now, the Suns are not beating the uh, Clippers. Suns in five. <laughs> yeah. The, the, oh, it looks like Devin Booker. Oh, no, he's up. But uh, before the uh, last quarter ended, uh, Paul, George. Paul George hit a three from uh, out there in uh, Damian Lillard land. Ooh, playoff P. Playoff P is here. So let's take a break. We come back. Uh, we're going to talk with.